and welcome to Cards by Kendra. I'm so excited. It's time for our new quarterly card making challenge. This is card challenge number three. If you're not familiar with my quarterly card challenges, it's where you use pattern paper and the free cutting templates and card sketches that are provided in the free PDF file that I have available on my website. And you'll use this to create a bunch of cards using just six sheets of six by six pattern paper. For this challenge, you can make 16 cards. You'll also need some additional matching colored cardstock, and then you can decorate the cards with whatever stamps and embellishments you'd like. The free PDF download is now posted on my website, and I will also link it in the description box below, so be sure to check that out. Now, once you make your cards, post pictures of your creations on social media and use the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 3 so that you can enter to win some prizes. So if you're not already subscribed to my channel, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and turn on those notifications so that you won't miss any of the videos that I post. This is a printout of the PDF and these are the cutting templates for the first two sheets of paper. Now what's new with this challenge is that I added some scissors to show which cutting line needs to be cut first when cutting the paper. And I also added some arrows to show the direction of each piece on how it will be on the card sketch. So if you have any patterns that are directional, like the one I just showed with the butterflies, you'll want to use those papers first when cutting A, B, and C here. This is the blue one. This is papers C and D. And um, for paper D, there is one little piece that is that has a horizontal arrow. So unless you turn card sketch number 14, the other way then you'll want to use non-directional paper for paper D as well as for papers E and F. For paper E the arrows you'll see go in different directions and so it definitely needs to be non-directional and there's going to be a three and a half inch square where you're going to need to cut out a circle using either a paper punch or a circle die or if you have a circle cutter that would work too but paper F is pretty straightforward now the papers are color coded so that you can see which paper goes with each of the card sketches and I've also numbered each of the pieces so you'll know which card sketch it goes with and I've indicated on each of the card sketches which paper the cut piece comes from. The parts of the card sketches that are gray or white can be matching colored cardstock or if you want to use additional sheets of coordinating pattern paper you can. Here I'm just showing where each piece comes from for each of the papers. And these are card sketches one through six. So the pink piece here on the right of card sketch four that comes from paper A will pair next to the red piece that comes from paper B and so forth. Again, card sketch five has paper C and B. And then this next sheet is card sketches seven through 12. Now my goal for this challenge was to try to not have any scraps. The only pieces that will be scraps are edges around the circle piece on paper E and then the top of that of paper D, the triangle piece there. Um, I actually ended up using that later, so make sure you stay tuned to see what I did with it. But for card sketch number 16, the pieces are stacked like a birthday cake, which works great if you have pattern paper that will look good with that. But for both of the examples I'll be showing you here shortly, I ended up turning both cards the other direction and then I spaced the pieces out a bit. If you find that the pieces that you have don't quite work with what's laid out on the card sketch, change it up so that it will work. That's what's so fun about this and why it's called a challenge. There's also instructions and a few helpful hints on that last page, but you'll see all that whenever you pull up the PDF. You can use the larger frames to create smaller frames of your colored cardstock and some other tips. The paper I'm using for my cards is the Butterfly Kisses paper from Pink and Main. This has a great mix of different types of patterns and colors. Some of the sheets are directional, so I thought this would be the perfect paper pack to use to show you how to use these card sketches. Since some of the colors and patterns don't necessarily coordinate with all of the other papers in the stack, it was a little bit of a challenge deciding which papers to assign as papers A, B, C, and so forth. But what's great is that these are double-sided and I was able to make it work. Now I made two different sets of 16 cards 
So a total of 32 cards plus a few extras with this paper pack. And I'll show you those after I go through how to use the cutting templates. This is the second set of papers I'll be using in order from A through F. And since I used 12 sheets for the cutting templates, I used the other 12 sheets in the pack as backgrounds for some of the cards rather than using just matching colored cardstock. And then I made additional cards with the scraps, like I said, with the scraps I had left over. So let's start with how to cut each of the papers using the cutting templates. This is paper number one, or A, and it is a directional pattern, so you wanna make sure to turn the pattern so that when you make the first bottom cut as indicated on the template with the little scissors, it will be facing the right direction. You'll cut it at five inches so that your strip is one inch and then cut the little one inch square next. Then you'll cut the top piece at three and three quarter inches first and then the other two strips at one inch and one and a quarter inch. I like to take cellophane sleeves and number them one through 16. So after I cut each of the papers, I can place the pieces into the corresponding sleeve for each card sketch. You could also pre-cut each of your card bases and put the pieces inside. Sometimes I like to use colored cardstock for my bases and I usually don't know what colors those will be until later. So I like this sleeve method be better. For paper B, this is another directional pattern with butterflies. So make the first cut at the at two and a quarter inches from the top and then turn it and cut it again at two and a quarter inches. And then you can cut the rest of the pieces and cut out that little triangle piece at the bottom later. For cutting template C, the back side is directional but I didn't plan on using that design anyway. I really like the stripes so you'll wanna first cut at two and a quarter inches and then at four and a quarter and then take the little piece at the end and cut it in half and then take the bottom piece and cut it at five inches, leaving another one inch strip. And then for paper D, you'll wanna cut off the right hand three quarter inch piece first. So find five and a quarter inches on your paper trimmer, then cut that strip at three and three quarter inches. Next, cut off the bottom piece at one and a quarter inches and then cut one inch off of that strip. Next, you'll cut a one inch strip off of the top piece and then turn it to cut off another one and a quarter inch piece. For the piece that's left, which should measure three and a half by four and a quarter inches, turn it so that you can measure one and three quarters of an inch on the three and a half inch side. Whew. And then you'll wanna make sure that you mark um, that with a pencil and then take that pencil mark and line it up with the corner of the piece to cut that diagonal part. And then of course you wanna make sure that you save this triangle piece because you may end up using that later. For paper E, you'll wanna use non-directional paper for this one. Cut the first strip at two and a half inches and then cut this piece at four and three quarter inches leaving a little one and a quarter inch piece. Next, cut the three and a half inch square, then turn the bottom piece and cut off the one inch strip and then turn it again and cut the two one and a quarter inch pieces. For the last cutting template, paper F, I wanna use both sides of the paper. So since one of them is stripes, I'm looking at the card sketches with green on them, so I'll know how I need to turn the paper. I wanted to have vertical stripes on card sketch 13, so I had to turn it to cut the top piece first at two and a quarter inches, and then cut off the little three quarter inch piece. And then I just cut the one inch strip off the bottom. I'll cut the tails of the banner later when I put the cards together. Now this is the second set of papers, but I won't walk you through this entire process again. But I went ahead and cut them out so that I could see what I was working with before putting the cards together. So here's all of the scraps sorted out into the cellophane sleeves. This first group of cardstock sheets, this from my stash, I found some really good deals at Tuesday morning on some basil cardstock, so I bought all that they had. And I also had some sheets left over from past Crafty Courtyard kits. And then this next group of cardstock is what came in the May Crafty Courtyard kit along with the Butterfly Kisses paper pack. And I'm gonna take this colored cardstock and match it up with the pieces that I have in each sleeve and cut the pieces down. These are gonna be for my frames. So when going through each of the pieces in each of the sleeves, I noticed that the strips that I had for card sketch 15 didn't coordinate. So this is where I use that triangle piece 
from paper D to cut out a matching three quarter inch piece. I also checked the pieces that were in the number 16 sleeve and those did coordinate with this particular set of papers. Now for my second set of papers, I did the same thing for card number 15. I swapped out that matching, that unmatching piece with the little triangle piece and cut that out. And it just so happened that these triangle pieces matched my other pieces. Um, for this second set though, on card sketch 16, the pieces didn't quite work. So this is why I had decided to use the leftover papers in the paper pad for backgrounds for some of the cards. And then whatever was left over, I um, used some scraps to add to the cards and then I made additional cards as well. Now to decorate the cards, I'm using several different stamp sets from Pink and Main. Now for the majority of the cards I'll be making, I'm using the Butterfly Sketches stamp set and the matching dies. I just think that they're beautiful. And I'll also be using this All Occasion stamp set. And then it also has some dies, one that says thanks and one that says hello. So I'll be using a little bit of everything from both of those stamp sets, as well as this cute little Firefly stamp set. This is called Way to Glow. And then I'm also using this cute dragon stamp set. This is called Oh Happy Day. And all of these stamp sets are available on the Pink and Main website. And I will link that in the description box below. I'm also using the Pink and Main Easy Squeeze Liquid Glue. Now before assembling the cards, I went ahead and stamped out a bunch of the butterflies using my Misty Stamping Platform and some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then I also stamped out additional butterflies in matching colored inks. And then I cut all of these out using the coordinating dies and my Big Shot die cutting machine. So I will list the colors that I use, the different inks in the description box, but I'm not gonna show you all that here on, vid on the video. Now I assembled all of the cards off camera and now I will show you the end results. This is my first set of 16. For card sketch number one, I used the Get Well Soon stamp from the Way to Glow stamp set. And I colored the butterfly with pink and purple Copic markers and added some enamel dots on the strip next to the sentiment. And then some Nuvo crystal drops in Morning Dew in the middle part of the butterfly. And I added some Clear Wink of Stella to give it a little bit of sparkle. And I did the same thing here for card sketch number two on this butterfly. I also added some Baker's twine around the square and I stamped the Hello stamp or sentiment with the Versamark ink. This is card sketch number three. And I used some Nuvo glow in the dark drops in banana split and added that to the tail so that this firefly would glow in the dark. And I think it's just too cute. Now for card sketch number four, I um, kept this one pretty simple. I did an ombre sentiment with some light blue and purple ink. And then I added some sparkle to that butterfly and Nuvo crystal drops in morning dew to the center. This is card sketch number five. And this one is where um, you have to cut the little tail of the banner, but I did the ombre stamp again with pink and blue and added some enamel dots to that one. I kept the butterfly pink. And then this is card sketch number six. Again, I did this ombre, but I did it kind of at a diagonal, the stripes, same as the pattern paper and um, added some crystal, Nouveau crystal drops as well to these butterflies and some enamel dots. This is number seven. And this one actually is pretty interesting. I wasn't really sure how I was gonna feel about this one, but I think this turned out really pretty. Um, again, I'm using pretty much the same concept. I made all of the butterfly wings sparkle with that clear wink of Stella. This is card sketch. I don't remember what number we're on, but anyway, this is where I used that uh, dragon stamp set, Oh Happy Day, and I added some little um, sparkle to those balloons there. And this is the next one. <laughs> this one says Dream Big, and I made that um, stamp, the butterfly was just stamped in blue. And now we're on number 10. This one I stamped the sentiment that says, I cannot imagine a day that I don't think of you and added three butterflies to that one. This is number 11. 
and I did the ombre again with some blue, purple, and pink ink. This is number 12. This is the one with the little banners, and I think this one is adorable. I love this. I used the sequin mix that came in the Crafty Courtyard kit, and I added the iridescent butterflies to the center of those pennants. And then here's another one where I did the same thing with the butterflies, and I added some pink and white baker's twine. And then this is... I believe this is th number 13, but I could be wrong. But this, uh, with sympathy, I didn't have any sympathy cards in this set yet. This um, this is another one that glows. This one says way to glow. And again, I added that glow in the dark nouveau drops and banana split to each of the little fireflies tails. And this is number I think this is the last one. <laughs> this one says, you are doing great things. And this was the one that I told you was the, on the layout looked like a birthday cake, but I just turned it. So this is the next set of cards. Card sketch number one, I used the Just a Note sentiment from the All Occasion stamp set. For this card sketch number two, I used that thanks word die from the All Occasions die set and added some of those holographic and silver butterflies in the sequin set and some white and silver baker's twine around the square. For number three, I stamped the wishing you well sentiment from the all occasion stamp set and added some enamel dots. And then here for card sketch number four, you'll notice all of these are pretty much that blue and white polka dot pattern with the burlap <laughs> and the butterflies on it. But I um, just I used another sentiment from that All Occasion stamp set. This is card sketch number five, I believe. And I turned this one the other way because I wanted that butterfly that was on that colorful piece to be facing the right direction. And then here I just um, stamped another sentiment from the All Occasion stamp set and I added three butterflies to that one. And then this is number seven, I believe. This one says hello there and I added that blue butterfly to kind of cover up that bottom piece that didn't really match the rest so you didn't really have to use that if you're going to cover it up with something and then here I made these banners just a little bit skinnier than what the card sketch measurements call for and I used a sentiment strip from Simon Says Stamp on that one and then on this one I decided to um, change this one up I use solid color banners on top of a striped background piece from one of those extra papers that I had but this one I used a sentiment strip that said birthday girl and then this is um, I love this paper this is probably one of my favorite prints out of this whole paper pack and I just stamped congratulations on that and added some silver butterflies from that sequin pack and then here is the one where you have the little the pennants and I put some teal colored sequins all over and that one says just a note and then here is another adorable dragon card I used this the banners and some um, mint and white Baker's twine and I colored that with Copic markers and then this one says you are doing great things and I added some enamel dots to that one as well as some Nouveau drops like I did with all of the other butterflies on the last set and then this one's probably one of my favorites um, this one I took and I heat embossed congratulations on some black cardstock with some white embossing powder and then here is the last one that says let's celebrate and again here I used a sentiment strip from Simon Says Stamp. Now that I've shown you all 32 cards that I created with Kendra's Card Challenge 3, I want to introduce you to the design team. These ladies will be sharing their talents on their YouTube channels using these same card sketches and cutting templates. So be sure to subscribe to their YouTube channels. I will link all of their information in the description box below. And then that way you can get additional card making inspiration. So I'm going to quickly show you again all 32 cards that I made using Kendra's Card Challenge 3 and while I'll do that I'll explain how to enter the contest. So first you'll want to download the free PDF file on my website at cardsbykendra.com and once you do that you'll create your own cards using these templates and your choice of pattern paper. They can be any color, any theme, 
using any sentiments you'd like, but you must use the card sketches for your cards. Now this challenge is open to card makers worldwide. You can upload your pictures of your card creations on social media and use the hashtag Kendra's Card Challenge 3 on Facebook, Instagram, or YouTube. And this is so I can find your entries. Now, for some reason, Pinterest will not allow me to see entries with that hashtag. So if Pinterest is the only social media account that you use, make sure that you send me a message. Now you can enter this contest up to three times per challenge and one set of 16 cards counts as one entry. Now, after the challenge ends on September 30th of 2021, I'll gather all of the entries and randomly select three winners using the random name picker from commentpicker.com and I'll post this on my YouTube channel. So make sure you're a subscriber and turn on those notifications. There are three different prizes that you can win. The first is a prize pack from Pink and Main worth $50. Michelle at Pink and Main has graciously agreed to sponsor this. And then the other two prizes are a mystery stamp set and die bundle and a mystery paper pad and matching ephemera. To get started on the challenge, visit cardsbykendra.com or click on that link in the description box below. You can also find additional information on my Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and now TikTok social media channels. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments below which card is your favorite. I can't wait to see what you create and I will see you again soon.